So yeah, encounter is it's 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 scary for people. God forbid we should meet someone who's different than ourselves. We might have to think, you know, in a new way or change or actually accept the fact that the Holy Spirit might be in this person. I will say too, you know, encounter is tough. I think for LGBT people um, too. Especially in churches, um, I go to a Catholic church with my partner, um, Andy, and uh, I still always have this moment of decision, you know, when, when we pass the peace, when everybody greets each other, because every other couple just hugs and kisses each other, and nobody makes a big deal of it, but I've never kissed Andy in church, and I've, I've recently started thinking about that, Will we be in church 10 years from now in front of our children, and during that part of the service, we just hug each other, um, give a handshake, and it's not that anyone has ever said anything to me, but nobody's gone out of the way to say, oh, just so you know, it would be okay. Not that they have to do that, but so encounter is a, is a difficult thing for us to do, I think, just, just the fact of showing up, <laughs> sitting in a church, it, I mean, it takes a lot of uh, faith. It does. And I would say that LGBT people have more faith than, I think, straight people <laughs> because of that. I mean, imagine um, you. what you've just described is really interesting, Brandon. You have internalized rejection already. <laughs> you don't need to even, even be told that you're rejected in the church. You've internalized it, and that's very sad. And I think that's a lot of the people that... Uh, Jesus came into contact with did the same thing. I mean, think of like the woman with the hemorrhage, right? Who, um, you know, doesn't even feel um, worthy to kind of stand up and greet him. She reaches down and touches the hem of the garment. Or the Samaritan woman, right? Who, who comes to the well at noon in the heat of the day because she's, we think, because she's been married five times and she's probably embarrassed. Maybe people didn't know enough to tell her, you know, you're not welcome to come at the regular time when other women come, she comes because she's embarrassed and she's kind of internalized that, and that's very sad. So I do hope in 10 years you'll be able to kiss your partner or, you know, soon to be your husband. Why not? What's the, what's, what's the terrible thing? And I think of all the people um, in church who, you know, have all sorts of other things on their conscience. They feel perfectly at home. So why shouldn't, why shouldn't a gay man feel perfectly at home in church? So, yeah, it's, it's up to the, the institutional church, I think, to make you feel welcome because no one else few people I think would, would feel the same way you do in church sort of reject it already so that's why it's up to the church to reach out to you that's what I think and that's why I feel you know your word bridge is important because I mean it is a two-way street and one thing I've been doing is just showing up and sitting there with Andy not touching him not flirting with him during church just being there Everybody gets it. We're not just sure. like two bros who happen to, you know, find each other in the parking lot, come into the church. People get it. So I feel like that's, and you know, it's funny because, you know, everybody's talking about resistance now. It's an important word because there's a lot going on. We, we do have to resist. But I think with social media, we have an image of what that looks like. But I feel like I've been resisting <laughs> homophobia in the church for years just by showing up, despite protests that maybe I shouldn't. That maybe you shouldn't, oh, that you shouldn't show up, that's the protest. Right. right. Well, I think, right, the question is, what form of resistance do you want to do? And I think that's a very effective form of resistance, <laughs> and it's, it's very gentle.